What's going on guys, Robert here from Rob is Tech and today I'm going to be reviewing the Dropcam HD, this 720p HD wireless video surveillance camera comes in at a hefty price of $150. Is it really worth it? Let's find out in my review right now. Alright, so first off, if you haven't seen my unboxing of this bad boy, go ahead and click on my hand right here. There'll be an annotation. You can see I actually go over the specs of the camera, what's in the box, and what the camera actually looks like. I have the camera mounted now, so I can't really show you a close-up of what it looks like, but if you want to see that, check out the unboxing video. So jumping right into the review, the first thing I'm going to be talking about is video quality. Now comparing it to the D-Link camera I successfully returned, uh, D-Link said it was enhanced video quality. Well, that was not the case. It was recording at 640 by 480. Dropcam says they're recording at 720p HD and streaming that HD video. And I got to say that the video quality wasn't great, but it wasn't necessarily bad. With enough light, any camera looks good, and the drop cam is no exception. Give it a lot of light, it looks really good. Especially at night, since I have it mounted on my porch. With my porch light on, it looks really good. As far as low light video is concerned, it's not very good. The night vision is mediocre at best. It's okay, but if you're expecting to see any kind of person, that's not going to work. Again, with enough light, it was okay. Compared to other reviews, many people said the same thing. The drop cam video doesn't really seem HD. The kind of the 107 degree viewing angle was definitely a plus, making it more widescreen, but it definitely wasn't HD. If you're expecting to see someone's license plate or their face even, it's not going to be great. They really got to look right at the camera. Again, it depends where you mount the camera. But for a Wi-Fi video camera in this class, it was pretty good and I was happy with the video quality overall. Another thing to mention about the video quality was the frame rate. Dropcam says that you can get 30 frames a second with this camera, and I thought that it was pretty near that. I got 30 frames. I noticed some stuttering when a motion would occur, like someone started to walk up to the front door. There seemed to be this kind of pause, but the video would continue and the audio would continue. But after a while, the frames seemed to even out after a second, and it looked pretty good. I was pretty happy with the frame rate. Now, taking a look at the drop cam itself, one of the things I like most about the camera is the design. The drop cam folks really went out of their way to make this camera really looking good, and I love that they put it in its own self-contained unit. The little black camera, just as it is the circular object by itself, is really nice to put it in a shrub or inside, obviously, um, in some kind of you know hidden away fashion. It's really nice. The metal base that comes with it is also nicely designed, and it works pretty well. On the downside of this design, one of the things that I would like to see is some accessories. Dropcam at this current moment does not have any accessories to go with this camera, like another base, maybe another wall mount, something like that. The design's really nice, but doesn't really fit any other kind of accessory mount or any kind of mount you could put the camera in. I would love to see Dropcam or some third parties develop some really nice accessories to go with this camera. So for some more mounting options, more unique looks, it'd be really nice. But overall, the design, pretty well built. And one of the things I like most about this camera is the setup. Dropcam touts this as the easiest setup ever, and I gotta say, it was pretty easy. Plugging in the camera, setting up a username and password, naming the camera, and putting it on a Wi-Fi uh, access point was pretty darn simple. I just unplugged it after that, put it where I wanted, and it worked pretty well. The only downside to this is that anytime I wanted to actually change the Wi-Fi radio of the camera, I had to plug it in by via USB. This is kind of a problem now that I have the camera mounted by my front door. Granted, Dropcam says this is an indoor-only camera, but even if you had the Dropcam mounted somewhere throughout your house, if you wanted to ever change the Wi-Fi radio or you ever got a new wireless router or something like that happened, you'd have to actually take the camera down, plug it in via USB to change the Wi-Fi settings. Kind of disappointing when you can change almost any other setting via the Dropcam website, which is one of the things I love most about this, but that's kind of a bummer and I'd love to see Dropcam uh, maybe possibly upgrade that with some kind of software update or some kind of enhancement. There's probably some technical reason, but that's one of the downsides of this.
Speaking of settings, I'm really happy that Dropcam allows the user to change a lot of settings. We can turn the status life on and off, you can switch audio on and off. A lot of the settings of the camera that you'd want to control can be controlled right from the Dropcam website and the mobile app, which I really love. Now there's some settings that you can't exactly tweak, but it for what the camera is, Dropcam gives you a ton of settings. Like I said, you know, turning the mic on and off, the notification light, even flipping the camera if you had it uh, mounted um, on you know upside down you could rotate it zooming in cropping it's really really nice if they give you all that granular control and i like that i appreciate that one of the biggest pros of this camera and one of the reasons why i like it so much is that there's no dvr required with any traditional security video system you're going to have 4 8 16 maybe 32 physical cameras with physical cable running all the way down to a physical dvr box you're limited to a connection a wired connection that has to go to that uh, and you're limited to a certain number of inputs to that. Now granted, there are other Wi-Fi cameras on a system, but the drop cam just makes it really, really easy to record. Now granted, we'll get into the plans a little later and why I don't like them so much, but speaking just with the you know with the plans by themselves with the functionality the drop cam DVR service is really nice and I like it because I don't have to have a physical DVR box I don't have to worry about storage space I don't have to worry about you know making sure that the unit's on drop cam you know does that on there and I love that I'm able to go back and scrub through X amount of days that I, you know, it depends on what plan you get, but you're able to go back, see through the days and not have to worry about having a DVR running out of space. It's one of the nice things about this, but the con to that and the downside is going to be the plans. Dropcam has certain plans that you can go through. They have a free plan that you don't have to pay anything for, but it kind of defeats the purpose because you can't actually go back and view previous clips. You can see, you know, get notifications when there's motion detected, but you can't go back and see what happened 10 minutes ago. With the plans, you're able to go back seven days and there's a plan that goes up to 30 days. The prices are kind of steep on this. I'm not entirely loving the prices. I think that the camera should need to be cheaper because they're, you know, drop cams getting their money from the prices. But for what you get, I like that they include a two week free trial of the drop cam DVR plan when you get the camera. And to go back for to seven days for I think it's $10 a month is reasonable enough that I'm going to purchase it. And I like the ability to go back and see what happened. Staying on the subject of Dropcam's online services, one of the things I like is the ability to create clips and share them with friends. If I see something funny, if I see, you know, maybe something happen that I want to share, I like that I can easily create a clip that saves it for later, and I can also share that with friends on social media or download the clip even to my hard drive. I really like that. Dropcam records it on their end, but let's see, you know, I see a home burglary actually happen in my house. The fact that I can download that footage and have it is nice. Granted, Dropcam does still watermark the footage, but the fact that I can download that raw footage is nice, and I appreciate that. That's a pro in my book. Now, getting to some of the negatives about this camera, one of them is going to be the audio quality. I'm not the only one. Others agree with me. The audio quality just isn't great. Take a listen for yourself. This is a spoken word test of me talking to the Dropcam, and you're listening to the mic. I'm talking very slowly pronouncing every word I possibly can. It is a bit windy, projecting very well, so it should be able to pick me up. Now granted, Dropcam makes sure to tell you that this is an indoor camera only. And I have this mounted outdoors, but it's mounted in a safe kind of porch-like closed off environment. It was windy outside, but I was speaking clearly, but you still kind of had trouble understanding me. If I was just, you know, going through or mumbling something, you couldn't really be able, you know, really be able to understand me. This is kind of funny because Dropcam has built in a speaker to the back of the Dropcam that would allow you to have a two-way conversation. One of the biggest problems I had with this is that I couldn't really carry on a conversation because one, the delay, and also because the audio was cutting in and out and I couldn't actually hear what the person was saying. Also, the built-in speaker on the back of the drop cam is nice to have, but you could barely hear it. Take a listen for yourself. Hello, can you hear me? I'm testing out the uh, microphone. Hello. Now I had to crank that thing up just so I could hear. If you were standing there in person, it's really faint to hear and it's hard to hear. I don't really know if it's even worth including. It's not, I guess it's nice to have, but Dropcam, please work on getting a better speaker built in. 
One of the biggest strengths of this camera has to also be that it has an amazing mobile app and website. The website's pretty good by itself, but the iOS and Android apps are great to use and very easy. I love getting push notifications when motion is detected, though this isn't really accurate all the time. Uh, I still love to be able to go back and easily scrub through the events that happened. I also like that drop cam allows me to have a little bit of a kind of an animated GIF, a kind of three frame preview of what the clip is. So I know exactly what's happening and I don't have to go scrubbing through the DVR. I really, really like the app. And this is again, one of the biggest reasons why I like this camera. Now I went through the pros, I went through the cons, let's get down to the bottom line of this camera. For $150, is this camera worth it? And I'm going to say, at least in my honest opinion, yes, it is. Despite its shortcomings, for $150, this camera is going to be better, at least in my opinion, than the other cameras in this field. Granted, there are other Wi-Fi video cameras, some might have better, better video quality or better audio quality in some regards, but in an overall look at the camera, I really, really like it. Looking at the other ones, like I said, the other ones seem to fall short to this. So the drop cam is by far not perfect. The one thing I would say is that the price is really, really kind of almost an Apple-like premium. I don't appreciate the fact that the camera is $150 by itself. They also get me with a DVR plan. Granted, you don't have to have a DVR plan, but you kind of want to if you want to go back and record. And they also charge you if you have an additional drop cam uh, you want to add to the system. I think it's like five dollars for the basic plan, just to add another camera. For the money, if you for the money, if you're gonna go out and buy more than one drop cam, I would recommend looking at an actual DVR system. For one and for one or two cameras, the drop cam's pretty good. But if you wanted to do more than that, I would look at an actual DVR system because the price is just an exuberant amount that's not really worth it. The drop cam really wanted to get competitive. I think they're already doing very well, but if they wanted to really make me happy and other consumers, drop the camera price to $100 and then I definitely recommend the camera. I still recommend it now, but it's a hefty price. Even talking uh, to someone on Twitter about it, it's $150 for a Wi-Fi video camera that doesn't have the greatest video and audio quality isn't exactly great. But what for, you know, what you get and compared to the other ones, I think it's still really really good. Make it $100, it's an ultimate buy. For $150, if you have the money and you're looking to get a nice, easy to use Wi-Fi camera, I'd recommend it. So guys, thanks so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about the drop cam, leave me a question or a comment, I guess, right down below. It can be a comment, it can be a question. If you like the video, make sure to thumbs it up and uh, add it to your favorites, share it with your friends. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for your support and I'll see you guys in the next video.